Hi third graders, so I wanted to take a few minutes to go over a property that we learned about in math a few months ago when we were talking about multiplication. It's the distributive property of multiplication. Um, I want to go over this now because it's going to be one of your lessons that comes up later this week. Um, it's a little bit tricky of a concept, so I want to take a look at it and review so that when we get to that lesson, the distributive property using area, you're going to have it down already. So if you remember distributive, the first thing that we talked about was what this word means. So distribute means to take something apart and then pass it out. Okay, or share it. And that's exactly what we're doing with the distributive property of multiplication. We're taking something apart, taking a number apart, and showing it in a new way, and passing it out and sharing it. So I want you to watch an example of what I'm doing and see if this jogs your memory. Okay? So the first um, example that I'm going to give you is, let's see, six. Oh, of course my pen doesn't work. Let's see, six times four, okay? I already know that a lot of you know what six times four is right off the bat, but we're gonna use the distributive property to show this in a different way, okay? So six times four, before I do anything, I'm gonna draw an array, six rows of four. So six rows, one, two, three of four. One row of four, two rows of four, three rows of four, four rows of four, five rows of four, six rows of four. Okay, so here I have six rows of four. We know that's another way to show six times four. Six rows of four, or six groups of four. Okay, but we're gonna break this apart. To distribute, we're gonna break it apart. I'm gonna take the number six. I just like taking this number. It really doesn't matter which one you choose, but it's the bigger number, so I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take the number six, and I'm gonna break it up into two add-ins that I can add together to get to six. It doesn't matter what numbers you choose. There's no right or wrong answer. There's multiple ways that we can get to six by adding two add-ins together, as long as those two add-ins equal six. You can choose three times three, or sorry, three plus three. You can choose five plus one. You can choose four plus two. There's a lot of different ones. Um, I think for today, I'm going to do four and two. 4 plus 2 equals 6. So I'm just taking this one factor that I have in 6 times 4, and I'm breaking it apart. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to break that apart and then share it or distribute it with this 4 right here. Okay? So 6 groups of 4. So instead of having 6 groups of 4, now I have 4 groups of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 four groups or rows of four. So what is that? I have one, two, three, four, four rows of four. I like putting in parentheses to separate it. Plus, oh my goodness, what's my other add-in? Two. Two rows of four. Okay, I took my two add-ins. I took the four and the two. I distributed them, and then I share them with the four again. Four rows of four plus two rows of four. I essentially have the same exact problem as six times four here, and just writing it in a different way. Instead of doing six times four, I'm doing four rows of four and two rows of four. I know that if I multiply these and then add them up correctly, it should equal the same thing. So four times four is 16, and I know that there's four, eight, 12, 16 right here, plus two times four is eight. I know that there's four, eight here. What's 16 plus eight? 24, which is the same as six times four, which is equal to 24, okay? so. Let's do a different one, and this time I'd like you to take a piece of paper out. So if you need to pause this right now while I erase, go ahead, pause it, get a piece of paper out, because I want to do this together. 